A free overseas trip? This is awesome. Don't hold back, Jack. Enjoy it. But I feel uneasy. A honeymoon is supposed to be special, right? Yeah, but the more the merrier. But this was supposed to be just the two of us. It's no big deal, Maddie. We're all going to have fun. When I found out that David had invited his brother and his wife, Jack and Emily, I felt like my heart sank. Our honeymoon was supposed to be just the two of us. From the very first day, they were selfish and loud at every tourist spot. At meals, they only ordered expensive dishes. I told David to make them stop, but he coldly replied, then leave. Those words hurt me deeply. I decided to go back home alone, but my decision to leave ended up with results they never expected. My name is Maddie. I'm 25 years old and bilingual. I grew up in Japan before moving back to the US. I was raised in a wealthy family thanks to my parents' real estate business. Growing up in Japan and attending an international school had a lasting impact on me. Two years ago, my life took a big turn. I met David at a party I attended with a friend. My friend's father also runs a company. That day, I was a little nervous. Big social gatherings were never my thing, but my friend kept insisting, come on, you'll have fun. So I reluctantly agreed to go. The party was held in a luxurious hotel suite. The stunning view of the city lights filled the room. The room was filled with successful business people and socialites. As we entered, champagne was served. Light music played in the background. Under a grand chandelier, people mingled, looking happy and relaxed. I grabbed a drink with my friend and joined the conversation. Then my friend said, I want to introduce you to someone. She led me through the crowd to meet David. David's first impression was that of a gentleman. He wore a sharp suit. His polished demeanor stood out. He was polite, confident, and had a warm smile. Hi, I'm David. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Maddie. His smile instantly caught my heart. We ended up talking for hours about work, hobbies, and dreams. I share stories about my time in Japan and my return to the US. Wow, that's amazing. I've always struggled with Japanese. How was life in Japan? It was great. I made friends from all over the world. I learned about different cultures. Hmm, I'm so envious. I've always wanted to live abroad. His enthusiasm was contagious. I found myself opening up even more. What are you passionate about, David? Honestly, not much. Maybe work? Oh, and I love traveling. I find peace in nature. I love traveling too. We should go somewhere together someday. That would be amazing. We spent the rest of the party together. His kindness and sincerity drew me in more and more. Do you want to step outside and continue our conversation somewhere quieter? Sure, that sounds nice. We strolled through the hotel gardens, talking about everything under the stars. I realized that David wasn't just from a wealthy family. He was kind and genuine. Maddie, I had such a great time tonight. I'd love to get to know you better. I feel the same way. Let's definitely meet again. That moment felt like the start of something special. We exchanged numbers. From then on, it felt like a dream. David would pick me up in a luxurious car. He planned our dates thoughtfully. He always prioritized my preferences and made sure I was comfortable. He chose elegant restaurants. He held doors open for me. He was a true gentleman. One day, David showed up with a bouquet of roses. It was the first time anyone had given me such beautiful flowers. Thank you, David. These are gorgeous. As long as you're happy, Maddie. I'd do anything to see you smile. His tenderness made me feel cherished. One evening, David suddenly proposed to me. We were walking along the beach at sunset. David stopped and looked at me seriously. Maddie, will you marry me? He held a small box with a stunning ring inside. Tears filled my eyes. I said yes. After that, everything seemed perfect. We began planning the wedding. We sent out invites. We looked for a new home. Each day was filled with excitement and discovery. However, everything changed when we received unexpected news. David's father's company went bankrupt. This meant David lost his job as well. That night, David spoke to me with a serious look on his face. Maddie, I have something to tell you. His expression made me instantly nervous. What's wrong? My dad's company has gone bankrupt, so I need to find a new job. The world seemed to shake beneath me. Everything that had been going well was suddenly falling apart. How could this happen so quickly? I didn't realize how bad things were. I'm sorry I didn't see it sooner. I saw the pain in his eyes and my heart ached for him. <sighs> it's okay, David. We'll get through this together. I still have my job. We'll figure things out. But David's expression remained grim. There's nothing else I need to tell you. 
My father suggested we call off the engagement. I was shocked. What do you mean, call off the engagement? Who said that? My dad thinks it's not the right time for us to get married, but I don't want to give up on our wedding. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing thoughts. David, I didn't fall in love with you for your money. I love you for who you are, and I want to continue our engagement, no matter what. Tears welled up in David's eyes. Thank you, Maddie. Hearing that gives me the strength to keep going. After that, I decided to talk to my parents. They had always supported me, and I knew I needed to tell them what was happening. When I returned home, my parents greeted me with concern. Maddie, what's going on? Is something wrong? I explained everything. David's father's company went bankrupt, and now David is looking for a new job. Oh no, that's terrible. What about the wedding? I still want to go through with it. Even though David lost his job, I want to support him. My parents paused, deep in thought. Maddie, if that's what you've decided, we'll support you. But you also need to consider the practical side of things. Yes, you should keep working, and we'll help you both as much as we can. I was filled with gratitude. After that, David and I discussed our future. He was determined to find a new job. I was equally determined to support him while continuing my work. We decided to continue with the engagement. Our fathers had a long-standing business relationship, so my father offered to help David's father's company until it could recover. Thanks to that, we were able to get married. I felt hopeful about the future, even though I knew there would be challenges ahead. However, after the wedding, David began to change. At first, he was as kind and caring as ever, but over time, he became distant. He started spending more time away from home. One night, I waited up for him. It was already past midnight, but he still hadn't come home. I couldn't shake the worry, so I decided to call him. Hello, David. Where are you? I'm just out with some friends. Don't worry about it. His words reassured me for a moment, but the late nights continued. Then one day I found a strange receipt in his jacket pocket. It was from a high-end club in town. David, what's this receipt for? Oh, that? It was just a business thing. I had to entertain some people. Entertain? But you don't have a job. His explanation didn't sit right with me. Since his father's company went bankrupt, his dad had been doing everything he could to recover. But David seemed to be spending his days as if nothing had changed. He was out every weekend. His gambling was getting worse too. One night I confronted him again. David, is this really what you want? Is this how you want our marriage to be? Stop nagging me. I need to blow off steam. Can't you just let me have some fun? His words crushed me. I watched as his savings disappeared and the atmosphere in our home grew colder by the day. How did we get here? Weren't we supposed to support each other and build a life together? That's just what you think. I'm living life my way. It was then that I first considered divorce. But I still held on to hope. Maybe, just maybe, he'd go back to being the David I fell in love with. One day, my mom spoke to me. Maddie, you don't seem like yourself lately. Is something wrong? Well, David has changed. He's been going out all the time and our relationship feels off. I know you're worried about him, but you need to take care of yourself too. Don't push yourself too hard. Her kindness brought me to tears. My mom's support was my only source of strength. But David's behavior didn't improve. He broke promises and he spent less and less time at home. I was always waiting, alone, hoping he'd come back. <sighs> David, we need to talk. We need to figure out where we're going from here. You know what, Maddie? Just enjoy your life. I was devastated. Our marriage had become meaningless to him. Mom, I don't know what to do. I think I'm at my breaking point. Maddie, you need to put your happiness first. If David doesn't change, it might be time to consider another path. Her words made me realize that divorce might really be the answer. I knew our marriage was falling apart because of David's actions, but I also knew that I had to find the strength within myself to move forward. I took things one step at a time, carefully thinking about what I needed to do. The future with David was becoming increasingly unclear. I had to figure out how to reclaim my own happiness. Meanwhile, we still had our honeymoon booked, and I wasn't sure what to do about it. The luxurious vacation we had planned was something we had both been looking forward to, but given our current situation, it seemed unrealistic. One evening, I sat down with David in the living room. David, to be honest, I don't think we should go on this honeymoon, not in the situation we're in right now. David was silent at first, but then he sighed deeply before speaking. <sighs> yeah, I know. But don't you think it's too late to cancel now? The cancellation fees would be huge. 
it seems like a waste. His words made me pause and think. It was true. The cancellation fees would be a big loss. Maybe it would be better to go than to lose everything. I get that, but things are different now. Our financial situation has changed, and I don't think we should push ourselves to go. You're worrying too much, Maddie. Just like when I went out with my friends the other night, you overthink everything. Maybe the trip will help us unwind a bit. His words made me feel slightly relieved, even though I knew he wasn't thinking things through seriously. But maybe he was right. Maybe we needed this trip to reconnect. Fine, David. We'll go on the trip, but let's keep it simple. Deva smiled, agreeing to my proposal. That's great, Maddie. I'll make sure we have a good time. So we decided to go on our honeymoon. I felt uneasy, but I was determined to make the best of it. After all, honeymoons are supposed to be one of the most special times in life. Exotic beaches, luxurious hotels, just the two of us. It should have been something to look forward to. But the night before we left, David suddenly dropped a bombshell. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this. I invited my brother Jack and his wife Emily to join us on the trip. My heart sank instantly. Jack and Emily? Jack and Emily had always been carefree and often relied on David for help. Since Jack worked for David's father's company, he was also unemployed now. Emily only worked part-time, so they were both used to living off the kindness of others. What? I thought this trip was just for us. Well, they're really looking forward to it. It'll be fun to have them around. I was stunned by how inconsiderate he was being. That night, I confronted him. David, are you seriously planning to go through with this trip? It's already settled. Jack and Emily are excited about it. Canceling now would be expensive. Then why didn't you talk to me when you made the reservation? Oh, I don't know. I mentioned the honeymoon, and they got excited. They looked up flights and just booked them. What? This is our honeymoon. I wanted it to be about us, to spend time together as a couple. He sighed deeply, clearly frustrated. <sighs> I get that, Maddie. But just think about it. Canceling now would cost a lot. Let's make the best of the trip, okay? His words made me hesitate. Maybe I was being too rigid. Maybe I was holding on too tightly. Fine, David. We'll go with them. But promise me that we'll make time for just the two of us. Of course, Maddie. We'll make sure to spend some time alone together. So we left for our honeymoon with Jack and Emily in tow. I wasn't sure what to expect from the trip. On one hand, I hoped we could rekindle our connection. On the other, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread. The night before we left, I felt a mixture of excitement and unease. When we arrived at the airport the next day, Jack and Emily were already there. Wow, a free trip abroad? We're so lucky. Thanks, bro. Maddie, this is going to be amazing. I couldn't help but feel a knot in my stomach. Oh, wait, free? What do you mean free? I turned to David, who was avoiding eye contact. David, explain this to me. It turns out that David had lied about Jack and Emily booking their flights. He had actually paid for their entire trip. Why did you do that? David, why didn't you tell me? He admitted that Jack and Emily hadn't gone on their own honeymoon yet because of a family emergency. David wanted to give them a special gift, but with the company's bankruptcy, he couldn't bring himself to cancel it. I felt even more burdened by the thought of them joining us. As we boarded the plane, David smiled at me from the seat next to mine. Don't worry, Maddie. This trip will be fun. I couldn't even respond. My heart felt heavy as we took off. Once we arrived, Jack and Emily's carefree attitude only intensified. Look at that view, Emily. It's incredible. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Hurry up and take a picture. Their excitement seemed innocent, but their loud behavior quickly became a nuisance to other travelers. Their shouting and laughing made people around us visibly uncomfortable. Could you two keep it down a bit? You're bothering other people. Oh, come on. Everyone's here to have a good time. Exactly, Maddie. It's a vacation. Their words only added to my frustration. At the restaurant that night, their behavior was even worse. They immediately ordered the most expensive items on the menu. Hey bro, can I try the steak? It looks amazing. And I'm definitely getting this dessert. Smiling, David encouraged them. Go ahead. Don't hold back. Order whatever you want. It's our honeymoon. Let's enjoy it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The frustration that had been building up finally spilled over. Are you serious right now? Do you realize how much all this costs? Who do you think is paying for it? We are. Or rather, I am. Oh, stop being so uptight. His words made my blood boil. You need to be more considerate. Why are you acting like this? Jack and Emily continued without a care. 
Come on, Maddie. It's David's money. Just let us enjoy the trip. Smirking, David joined in. Yeah, Maddie. It's our money. Let them enjoy themselves. How could you say that? You promised to make this trip special for us. He shrugged. If you don't like it, you can always go home. I couldn't believe my ears. What did you just say? You heard me. If you don't like it, leave. That was the moment when my heart shattered completely. I couldn't believe how cold and distant he had become. That night, I returned to the hotel room alone, feeling utterly defeated. Our honeymoon was ruined. I couldn't see any reason to stay with David any longer. The next morning, I packed my suitcase quietly. I made the decision to leave. I couldn't bear to face David or his brother again. As I walked through the lobby with my suitcase, my heart felt heavy, but I knew this was the right choice. I got into a taxi and headed for the airport. This ride seemed to take forever, and the beautiful scenery outside the window meant nothing to me. As I sat in the back of the taxi, I held back my tears, knowing that this was the end of my relationship with David. This was my life, and I had to take control of it. When I arrived at the airport, I checked in and headed for the gate. Every step felt like a small victory in reclaiming my independence. As I sat in the waiting area, emotions surged through me: anger, sadness, disappointment, but also a glimmer of hope. I was taking my life back. When I boarded the plane, I fastened my seatbelt, and as the plane took off, a single tear slid down my cheek. As we soared into the sky, I felt lighter, as if the weight of my failed marriage was finally lifting. When I got home, I went straight to my parents' house. As I walked through the front door, they were waiting for me, their faces filled with concern. I took a deep breath and told them everything. The honeymoon was a disaster. David invited Jack and Emily without telling me. They acted like spoiled children, and I couldn't take it anymore. My parents' expressions shifted from concern to anger, but they remained supportive. My father clenched his fists in anger, but he hugged me tightly. I'm so glad you're home. You don't have to go through this anymore. Hearing those words from my dad made the tears finally flow. The warmth and love made me feel safe again. I didn't know what the future held, but I knew I wasn't alone. That night, I slept peacefully in my childhood bed. My marriage to David was falling apart, but I would find happiness again. Meanwhile, after I had returned, David, Jack, and Emily continued their trip. Even though I wasn't there, they still enjoyed the luxury hotel and the fancy dinners. But their fun didn't last long. From what I heard later, things went downhill quickly. After dinner one night, David tried to pay with his credit card, but it was declined. What? Why won't the card work? What's going on, bro? Hurry up! Other people are waiting. David panicked and tried another card, but it was also declined. I'm sorry, but this card is not accepted. What? How is that possible? They tried to explain using a translation app on their phones, but it only made things worse. If you can't pay, I will have to call the police. David, Jack, and Emily were even more confused, and soon enough, the police were called. Back home with my parents, I was sitting with them when my phone suddenly rang. It was David. Mary, please. Help! The card isn't working, and I can't pay for anything. I don't know what to do. None of us speak the language. I sighed deeply. Why are you calling me? I thought you could handle things on your own. Please, Mary, this is serious. Can you transfer money to us? No. After everything, you expect me to help you now? I refused to transfer the money. But after some back and forth and pressure from the police, I reluctantly sent the funds to settle the bill. This is the last time, David. Once the money was sent, I felt a slight sense of relief. I thought it was over, but I was wrong. Shortly after, things got even worse for them. They realized they couldn't return to the U.S. because they didn't have their passports. Where's the passport, bro? I thought you had it. Well, I don't know. Didn't Maddie have it? That's when they realized I had their passports. I had taken all the important documents, including their passports, back to the U.S. with me. They were stuck abroad without a way home. I sighed again when I got their frantic call. Really? You guys are helpless. Fine, I'll help you get your documents sorted. Thanks, Maddie. You're a lifesaver. I told them to go to the U.S. Embassy to get emergency travel documents, but it wasn't easy for them. They couldn't communicate properly, and they struggled to fill out the paperwork. What do I write here? I don't get it. I don't know either. Meanwhile, I was on the phone back in the U.S. trying to guide them through the process. I was exhausted. This is your fault, Maddie. You took our passports. You should have kept track of your own documents. After hours of back and forth, they finally managed to get the paperwork done and secure their travel documents. The stress was overwhelming for me, even from a distance. Eventually, they were able to board a flight and return home. When they got back, they looked worn out and defeated. 
Jack and Emily started blaming each other for everything. I heard that they couldn't stop arguing after they got back. Apparently, their relationship started to unravel too. Soon, they decided to divorce. I couldn't help but feel a bit of satisfaction knowing that their trip had been such a disaster. Meanwhile, David's parents were furious. His father was livid when he found out how they had ruined my honeymoon. I can't believe you did this to Mary. You have to take responsibility for everything you've done. After that, I sat down with David for one final conversation. David, I feel nothing for you anymore. I don't trust you, and I don't find you attractive. I want a divorce. No, please, Maddie, don't say that. I know I messed up. We can fix this. Please, let's try again. He was pleading with me like I had never seen before, but I was done. And then give me back the money I pay for you and your brother. Pay me back, and maybe we can talk. David froze. Oh, I can't. I don't have that kind of money right now. I knew he only had about $100 to his name. But I'll pay you back eventually. Just give me another chance. I shook my head. No, David. I've given you plenty of chances. You've hurt me too much. I know I hurt you and I'm sorry, but I'll change. I'll work hard to make things right. I sighed, feeling exhausted. <sighs> David, you've never shown any real effort. I've supported you this entire time and you've thrown it all away. But I can change. Please, just one more chance. It's too late. You should have changed earlier. My feelings for you are gone. David was silent, a look of defeat on his face. I understand. I can't pay you back right now, so I'll agree to the divorce. I felt a sense of relief wash over me as he said those words. Finally, it was over. David and I divorced. I later found out that Jack and Emily's marriage didn't survive either. Their divorce came not long after ours. With no financial support from my family, David's family fell into bankruptcy. They lost everything. Even though my heart was still healing from the pain of my failed marriage, I finally felt free. I knew I could move forward and create a new future for myself. A future filled with hope and happiness. Six months later, I ran into an old friend from college, Jake. Jake was always a close friend and we quickly caught up on everything. He had also recently gone through a breakup and was nursing a broken heart. Maddie, I know how hard it is, but we'll get through this together. His words were a balm to my soul. We started talking regularly and slowly our friendship grew into something more. A year after my divorce, Jake confessed his feelings to me. Maddie, I think I'm falling for you. I realized I felt the same. Jake and I began a new chapter of my life together. And for the first time in a long time, I felt truly happy again. David never contacted me after the divorce. I heard through mutual friends that his life was a mess, but I didn't care anymore. One day I received a letter from David apologizing for everything. He wanted to make amends, but I had already moved on. I had built a new life with Jake. The past was behind me, and I was ready to embrace the future. With Jake by my side, every day felt like a fresh start. My family welcomed him with open arms, and our bond grew stronger. We talked about the future, planned adventures, and found joy in the little moments. As I looked into Jake's eyes one evening, I knew I had made the right choice. Our past hardships had led us to this happiness. The challenges with David had been painful, but they were part of the journey that brought me to where I was meant to be. My life with Jake was filled with love, peace, and excitement for the future. I would never look back.